YouTube, it's Brian Phillips again. Sky King, the F959. Um, we did a review on this the other day. It was kind of cloudy and murky. My voice was still coming back, and it is a little bit still. But it's beautiful. We've got spring-like weather all weekend. As you can see, the melt is happening, and so it's kind of muddy and mucky. So we're going to fly off the deck, something we normally don't do. This very light breeze is just beautiful day. Just soaking in the sun, just like the cat. Yep, the cat is soaking in the sun. Why is he so, sitting in the shade? Crazy. Without further, because <laughs> well, he's a black cat. He's hot. <laughs> Sorry, camera crew. There we go. I was trying to get it in the advanced mode. I'm gonna try to put this right overhead if I can. Whoa! <laughs> it, was, it was not one to turn properly. head was that over? That was not over my head, but I couldn't <laughs> get it to turn. I know. Oh, I know why. Because I forget this is a three-channel plane! <laughs> That's one thing about this plane is you really got to give it some throttle to make it do what you want. I can't see my focus at all. Sorry guys if it's bad. It may not be bad. I know it's, I just can't see. <laughs> you just can't tell. Luckily I can film just by... Film by feel. Yep. It's like flying by feel. You could go a step down if you need to. So that way I don't block you. I might here in a second. We designed this little spot on the deck with this in mind. We did? We did. No, this little step? <laughs> we did. Oh, yes, yeah, I did. the little, yeah. The little flying perch? We don't use it very often. Because it's better up front, usually. It is so weird because, here, give him a shot of my thumbs. I keep trying to do this to control the plane. <laughs> doesn't do anything. <laughs> doesn't do anything. That's what happened like, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> the chickens are not in the coop right this second. So I'm not scaring the crap out of them. Should we show them where the chickens hang out? Sure. You can. Chickens are right behind me now. Yep. They're across the creek. They like to go across the creek and hang out. We kind of got a little grove over there. And then when the foliage comes back in, when they will actually, they'll change their position quite a bit. Mm -hmm. See, that's a little bit awkward because you don't quite have any authority once you get upside down. I think it might be something to do with the stabilizer. I wanna see if I can recreate that situation again here. I'll come up here, upside down, and then you're depending on the rudder, and because you have the uh, reverse dihedral, which would be like, I think it's called anhedral. No, anhedral is both. Then you basically kind of lose your roll and yaw authority all at once. So the only option is to pull up on the elevator to kind of complete the turn. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because here we go. All the way up. And then at that point, see, you can't, <laughs> all you can do is kind of kick the tail around, but it doesn't really impact the direction of the flight because those wingtips all of a sudden point down instead of pointing up. I'm going over again. You know what this flight is asking for? What? The use of the stick of shame and or ladder. <laughs> Great. No, I'm just saying, I'm saying it. <laughs> We're going to end up doing that. I want to fly under the deck. What do you think? You think I could do it? Maybe. I don't know if I can do it with this. There's not quite the finite control. Yeah, I know. There. With other things, I I know you could, but this one is. You want to come out to the edge? Sure. Okay, show you spots there. Perfect. It's really cool being right on the edge like that because you you don't you don't usually fly looking down or level. Yeah. That's, that's why true. I like flying in this bowl so much because it's fun because you get this like protection from the wind. Then you've got that strange little backdrop of trees. 
feels like almost like maybe I'm losing power a little bit. See if I can catch it up here. Think I can? Maybe. I helped you. <laughs> there you have it, guys. We're going to pause and switch batteries. Hey, we actually, we'll check the voltages. So this one here is at 3.77. We're at 7.5. Okay, 3.79, 3.78. So that's right at a good storage voltage. Now, this pack is the one that came with a Sky King. So we had it plugged in for 30 seconds to a minute before we came outside. So we'll pause it. We'll switch to another pack and give you one, one other short quick flight so we had about five and a half minutes on that flight i don't know if i mentioned this in my first video but you really kind of have to stuff that all the way up in the nose and then i use these little voltage alarms all the time when i can some planes are a little bit too small for them and you do add quite a bit of weight so just so you know we're at uh, 8.18 cell one's at 4.18 cell two's at 4.18 okay <clears throat> which doesn't sound right because that wouldn't add up to the right numbers, <laughs> but whatever. I'm, I'm pretty sure it might be right. Close. Close enough for what we do. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to go under the deck if we get an opportunity where the wind is really lulled down. That canopy is kind of... See this thing? Kind of yeah. opened up on me a little bit. So, so I just have to try again. See, I'm kind of guiding it down there. You have to kind of pull these lips out and then stuff it in. Well, it's not snapping. How it goes. See that, guys? I'm gonna just grab my fingernails and squish it together a little bit. It's just a clasp. I could be hitting this. I bet that's what it is. Yeah, the voltage alarm may have been sticking up too high. I'm just trying to catch this edge, and then we'll see if I can get it to snap in there. Well, whatever. If it comes off. I'm sure my camera crew will help me get it. <clears throat> no, she won't. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of elevator trim, actually. What the heck was that? <laughs> Maybe you should okay. put the canopy on better? I guess we'll pause it. All right, so we went out. It looks much worse than it really is, of course. There's just not enough weight to make a big amount of damage okay so that's in there obviously we got mud on the tip and on the propeller so i just need to kind of knock that off Ew. do you hear like the cannon in the background <laughs> yeah that sounds of cool. spring <laughs> the sounds of spring cannons and explosions that's what it sounds like in our neighborhood mm -hmm. that's why we like not being in a neighborhood mm -hmm. <laughs> Because when we're not doing this, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that <was> great. <laughs> That's exactly the look I'm going for. Because <laughs> I have a brown tip. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> sorry. Did that the is... voltage alarm come out? No, or uh, actually, there? let's look at the rudder. That's the one that I felt like I lost. That's working. Elevator's working. That was weird. Well... I don't know, but you saw what happened just was as well as I did. Was it a battery? No, no, it wasn't a battery issue. It's just a... It was, uh, it was a bang good fluke. <laughs> My favorite. Okay, let's make sure we're in the right mode. So I'm trying to go upside down here. So I feel like, I think I'm okay. I don't know what the heck happened. Maybe there was just enough wind I couldn't overwhelm the impact of the wind. That was weird though. Yeah. Okay, back to the auto leveling. Okay. Just giving it a little little hint to come over this way. Out of the auto leveling. The reason I come out of the auto leveling is because I need more elevator authority to make a tighter turn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot me down. Man. You don't want them to come flying at your face with a brown tip like that. No. Ooh. Definitely not. Wrong order. <laughs> well, it seems to be doing all right. Okay, trade me spots, camera crew. Okay. 
Well, it is a, it is a good flying plane though. Other than that fluke, I don't know exactly what the heck happened. But I would assume it was probably just a gust of wind that came around this house. And uh, as a result, I couldn't quite overdo it. Here we go. That thing looks good. Yeah. If it was four channel, I think it would be a little more desirable. I also think that if it was four channel and we had like a full length flapper ons, That'd be pretty cool too. Hope you got that. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Neat. <laughs> nice contraction. <laughs> See the wings flex? That's kind of disappointing, but at the same time, it's not a big deal. You remember my first plane, the Clouds Fly from Hobby King? That I, I got at Hobby King. I don't even think it was. It was an ANX Clouds Fly. I don't exactly know what ANX stands for, but it had kind of a similar condition on those wings where it went into the wing root there. I had to put tape around them. Do you remember that? I remember the Clouds Fly. I don't know if I remember the tape thing and the wing flexing thing, but. It was that bigger was than bigger this. than this. That was about a one meter plane. Yeah. Maybe a 1.1 meter. I certainly wasn't flying it next to our house. That was back when I was learning to fly. I didn't have stabilization or auto leveling. Mm -mm. It was one of my first planes without. Just a very good plane. It looked just like this thing. Real similar rear facing uh, pusher prop. That's better than a front facing pusher prop. <laughs> configuration never works well that was back in the day where i was like oh now it has a glider so we shouldn't need any more planes <laughs> I, I remember when i was so foolishly thought that, that might even be true i was like oh now i got a plane i got a glider and i got a plane one of each type yeah yeah um, maybe like 100 planes in now yeah something like that i really would like to go under this deck I mean, I've already to... got a dirty tip. Yeah, might as well. Do you want me to go down the stairs? Yeah, let's give the people a better shot at least. Uh, all right, you want to go down my pathway? Yeah. <laughs> you have to tell me when you're coming around the corner. Oh, I see you. Out. What did I hit? The ground. <laughs> oh, dang it. Really? <laughs> yeah. I assumed I hit like one of the swings or something. No. No, you were right through the I middle. Just I just didn't have enough yeah. altitude. Right. Calls for another try. Wow, there's like tons of wind coming around here. That could have been what it was then. No okay. All right, I'm coming around, camera crew. Don't worry. All right. See if I can. Maybe I'll get lucky and I can go backward with the wind. Well, that was pretty cool. It's kind of cheating from down here though, because I can see good. Yeah some grass over there. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I'll go around so I can actually see my altitude and then I'll do it. So guys, you've got decent control authority on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> what was that you were saying about control I was authority? I saying uh, decent. Yes. I didn't say good. <laughs> All right, I can go through the snow for this one. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to put it together here. That removable wing makes it really in bolt. I mean, it just doesn't get damaged. It just kind of like pops apart. I mean, sometimes you get your tip kind of brown and, you know, dirty. But beyond that, beyond a dirty, dirty covered tip, muddy tip, Oh, sorry, wrong side of the house. <laughs> Coming back around.
That's all she wrote, I think. Pause it so I can come up and not fall. Okay. So in closing, guys, this is my second flight experience. Well, that's not true. I flew one other time off camera. Mm, yeah, I think so. But I really like this plane. It flies good. The weaknesses are easy to overcome. Um, a little extra. I wish this would control the rudder because I'm just used to it being that I fly with full control on most of my planes. Ailerons would be cool, but definitely not like, not like you can't do it without. Uh, the other thing too is I'm not sure if this transmitter even transmits the fourth channel because if you did transmit the fourth channel, then hypothetically you might be able to put ailerons on here, but then your ailerons would be controlled here. That would be a little weird. Mm. instead of being controlled here so i'm not sure if there's a way to switch that i know you can fly this hypothetically with the jumper and then you could change the control axis you could reassign which one you want to do which and then you could set these things to be flaps too which would be pretty sweet um and um, flaps instead of ailerons but i really like this plane and it's got the wheelie mode <laughs> i have no idea what that is so, well, it's good to have a low consequence. I mean, you just crashed it like three times and put it back together and flew yeah. it. Or maybe yeah. only twice. But, oh, no. I dragged I mean, it around. That's yeah. right. But, it's, but it didn't damage anything. Right. There's Which like is not nice. even nicks in the wing. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the crazy part. I do have a little nick there. Probably from hitting the branch. But honestly, but it's just awesome. I mean, yeah. these, this type of plane is a type of plane you go out and fly. It's cheap enough that you don't... You're not going to lose sleep over crashing it. Well, I mean, maybe if it's your first plane, you will. Because you're going to be like, I need to fix it right now. Right. And if you if you buy it from Banggood, follow the links below. You'll help give us a couple of bucks in credit. And when I say a couple of bucks, that's if like ten thousand of you buy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this thing is this thing is really fun. I like it. It's inexpensive. It's a great first time player, uh, first time flyer. You've got the expert mode and the regular mode where it's gonna auto level for you. I mean, you just you just didn't have that just a few years ago when I started this five years ago. Mm -hmm. We didn't have something this awesome for this cheap. That's for sure. And it's getting better and better. I mean, some of the technology that they're squishing into these little crappy planes is just awesome. And when I say little crappy planes, this thing sucks compared to uh, like the Phoenix 2.6. It's 10 times the plane this. I mean, literally and figuratively, it's 10 times the plane, but it's also going to cost you double to triple for the plane batteries. And then you're going to have to have a nice trend. You're not going to use this transmitter. And that's a higher consequence if you that's crash right. it. Crash you it. Crash it. It's going to get broke. Although you're not going to be as likely to crash it because you didn't have control authority and you couldn't flip it over, so it ran into the tree. Right. So, but I'm telling you, first time flyer, this thing is great. You take that out backyard, fly it around. You know, just watch out for the FAA agents and stuff. You know, <laughs> hiding in your <laughs> hiding yeah. in the bushes, in the bushes, ready to pounce on you. Okay, and you get Twenty-seven thousand dollar fines. Chickens will chase them away for all the danger that you exhibit on society. <laughs> With your foam toy. <laughs> With your foam toy made out of a coffee cup. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, come back for more. Uh, you know where to find it, Brian Phillips RC. We're not quite to 100,000 subscribers, but five years ago, if you would have asked me if you had 75,000 or whatever we're at now, I would have said, you're crazy. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, we've enjoyed a lot of success. And it's not because of us. It's because of you guys watching. So come back, watch some more. If you never buy a thing from a link, I don't care. I, it'd be better if you did. <laughs> so I kind of do. But we just want you to watch the videos and enjoy them and uh, ask questions. And I try to respond to people, uh, which is something unique on our channel. I, I'm not going to be like XJet and say I, I don't go after the uh, links, follow the links. <laughs> but we the put thing is, a lot of effort we into put a this. lot of effort into this. And my camera crew, the one behind the scenes that you should feel sorry for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she puts a lot of effort into this. I love this stuff. She tolerates it. So, if for nothing else, do it do for it me. For her. <laughs> all right, that's all you get for today. Thanks for watching, guys. This thing is cool. Buy one. All right, YouTube. You thought you were done with me, but you're not yet. <laughs> okay, so we have the TS, uh, the T8SG Plus, uh, the jumper, and we've got it bound up to this Sky King because I, I had to satisfy some of my curiosity here. And the first curiosity is I got myself this small servo that was out of a crashed plane. And I plugged it in to that port there. I assume that'd be the aileron port based on what the A800 uses for the ailerons. And I did confirm that in the A800, as you can see here. So um, I'm just going to show you guys the monitor mode so you can see that I'm not like full of it. I did test this on another plane and it did work. 
So if you want to look real quick, I have a sign switch C to channel five here. You'll notice there's no activity on the servo, okay? Now elevator, you can see on the monitor mode, it shows. Then the rudder is channel four. It doesn't actually do anything in this application. And again, nothing happening here, nothing happening here. Um, I have a throttle cut here. I'm gonna turn that off just so you can see the output. And then just so you can see, this doesn't change. So at this moment, I'm not really sure why, but evidently that, <clears throat> that particular port is not active. So I'm gonna show you what I did. So I'm gonna unplug this, and I guess we'll have to figure that out further. But for now, walking out of the menu, I'm gonna show you how I did this real quick. I called it the Sky King on the jumper. So you'll go into the model menu, <clears throat> model setup. And in my case, I copied from the A800, which has been out for a while, but I'm just gonna show you my settings real quick. I'm using the default icon. I, of course, named it, you know, Sky King, which is pretty simple stuff. And then I chose the plane type. I have the transmitter power at 100 uh, milliwatts and PPN is none. And then the PPM in is none. All right, so we're on the KN protocol here with uh, bind, and of course it's already bound. So it, you notice it started flashing when I did that. Show them that little flashing red light there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's because I switched the protocols. So anyway, um, just walking through, I have a fixed ID is just the default. Number of channels is 11 and then the advanced uh, GUI. So we're back to normal. If you want to know how to build that model, I believe you can set up a default plane. The only difference is, I'll show you one thing, it's in mixers, so you'll go into mixers. And then if you walk all the way to the top here, <clears throat> I've been playing with this trying to get that channel five to work, so I'm not going to show you how I set that up. But throttle is set to simple with a nine point curve, okay? Ailerons are set to, whoops, ailerons are set to complex. And the reason they're set to complex, there's two mixers, so that means there's two pages. So you can see there's an expo on there. The switch is none, replaces mux, the source is ailerons. So you can see it moving there. And you can see it moving the rudder there too, but it doesn't have any impact on the output, which I would really like this to also work here. I tried setting it up, I just couldn't get it, so I gave up on it eventually. Expo 20, scale 100, Offset zero and then trim is set to okay. And now I'm gonna walk down to page two so you can see what happens. Page two is switch AO, which is part of a virtual switch. Um, it says the MUX is replace. The source is aileron, expo five. And I'll show you what that looks like. Expo five is symmetrical, values five. I'm not really sure why that is. Whoops. But like I said, I copied this model from the A800 and I worked through it and did some minor changes. So we'll go to page two again, and then it says the MUX is replaced for the ailerons, Expo 5, scale and offset trim is allowed, okay? So then on an elevator, it's complex. The only reason it's complex, um, we have three mixers. So we have the replace for elevator, Expo 20, okay? Now watch this. So page two, same thing that AO, replace elevator, Expo 5, and then page three, the, the only difference is add throttle 13 point negative 10 zero. And so what that does is <clears throat> when you're in the, the easy to fly mode, it's gonna add some elevator when you give throttle. So as when you launch it, it's easier to launch. That's what they set up on that by default um, on the one that you can get online there. I believe I have a link to it on my, my a800 video, but then the rudder is set to simple because it's not actually doing anything. Um, and when I say it's not doing anything, it's just rudder expo 20, but that shouldn't matter anyway, because remember, anytime you make a change, hit save before you exit, you'll want to hit enter at save. Okay. Channel five is complex. I was just doing this to make this switch have some impact on output so we could prove that that servo wasn't working, so you can ignore that. Then channel eight was used, um, I believe for, nope, it's for A, because you can see how this changes the output. 
So I'll just scroll through those so you can see how it's set. Mixers two, page one is switch none, replace none, fixed, minus 100, offset zero and no trim. And then page two is switch A2, replace none, fixed, 100. So what that does is basically A, A is used for setting the dual rates and uh, I don't want to say the dual rates, but it's set, setting the rates and it's setting the flight mode for auto leveling or not. So I'll show you that when we're flying. It's similar to on the default radio, you press this button and it beep beep, that puts it into the, um, allowing you to do loops and all this, the advanced mode. And then this is the high rate, low rate toggle. Okay, so that's tied together on switch A in that default program from the A800. So you can use that by default and it'll work right away which is kind of nice. Okay, so then there's one more thing in here. It's a virtual setup. Uh, I think it's a virtual 11, uh, complex 10. And so complex is set up. There's three mixers. Page one is switch HO is what I set it to. I believe it might've been to G by default. So we're replacing for mux, the source is none, and then the curve is fixed at minus 100. And then page two is gonna be replace. Source none, fixed, scale 100, offset zero. And then of course, page three is gonna be H1 again. Source is none, fixed for the curve, and then scale 100. So as you can see, when you switch it, or when you switch this, it's gonna, it's gonna give you a throttle cut. And the throttle cut is set, so it's on now. You'll notice nothing happens to this. But when it's off, it's allowed to go up and down, okay? So with the throttle cut on, I'm gonna show you real quick, go into the model menu, go to mixers, and then under throttle, not simple, you'll press enter, and then that's where you can set your safety features. Virtual one, uh, virtual one zero, virtual 10. See that? I have its safe value as minus 100, and and then the uh, minimum limit is 150 minus, and then the maximum limit is 100, which is typical, typical default setup. So anyway, that's all that it is. You can copy it by literally going through that video. I wouldn't do it. I would just go find it online, download it in there, and it's super easy. Um, we flew this a couple of times. The other thing I want to show you real quick is I also built uh, a, a couple of these adapters. Earlier on, I was talking about having adapters because I've got all these these little 300 milliamp 2S packs, but they have GST connectors. And then this of course has the low C connector. Now, if you're familiar with these connectors, you could technically take apart the connector and make that happen, but you're, you're gonna risk uh, catching this on fire. So don't do that. Um, I built these two adapters. One of them has a GST adapter here so that you can plug that in. And then you end up with the same output as what comes with both the A800 and with the Sky King. These are both incidentally 300 milliamp 2S packs at about 20 C, okay? So you end up with the exact same um, effective battery with that adapter. Now, the cool thing is, then I can go up to another pack like this. I believe this came with what, the uh, Sport Cub 500 maybe? Yeah, I can't I remember so. what it came with. But the, no, it didn't come with the Sport Cub 500. That was, that was one S. But either way, mm -hmm. I've got this set up so that I can use larger packs, which do work really nice in this plane. Um, I flew this plane on the 500 milliamp pack. It's about as big as I could fit in here. I also put it back here and flew it and it was very pitch sensitive because it was tail heavy. So just a quick heads up on that. Now I also built an adapter that will take this and then it will take the output from that low C connector and it will allow me to use them in my other planes that have GST plugs. So that's really handy. And then also for charging and things like that. So anyway, that was, a, that was a quick little project I did this afternoon just to kind of get fully equipped for this video. So big bummer that we couldn't get this to work. Now, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how much better, um, how much better controllable this thing is, the Sky King, um, with the jumper and the 20% Expo. And then what we'll do is we'll just jump right into a flight with the A800 so you can kind of see the differences and then also in the exact same environment at the exact same time of day using literally the exact same transmitter with the exact same setup. 
So we'll see how that works, and you guys can make your own judgment call as to which one of these is better. I tend to think that this plane flies a little bit better. It's cheaper by a few bucks only, though. And then this one, it just didn't do it for me um, the way that this did, which is funny because it's three channel. I should not like it as much. So the other thing is this one has had a couple of rough landings. And so the motor will actually break for us, if I recall, because I crashed into the dirt a few times and it kind of bound up the motor enough that when I let go of the throttle, it bites. This one, tractors, meaning that it spins and it creates a lot of drag while you're flying. This is a brushed motor. It does not stop with braking, ESC braking. Electronic speed controllers can break a brushless motor, but not a brushed one. So without further ado, we're going to get out and start flying right now. Okay, so we got the Sky King, the F959, and uh, with a wheelie mode. <laughs> and I did try, just so you know, I did set it up so that the rudder would work here instead of over here like it does on the default remote that it comes with. But I just wanted to use it as close to what you guys will find online if you get the one online. So the other thing is, keep in mind, I have a throttle cut on here set up too. So the throttle cut, we're not going for an endurance flight. I just want you to see the differences between these two modes. And then this is where... That's where we activate the fully allowed expert mode. And then this is with the auto leveling and to help recover. Okay. So we'll go ahead and launch in that mode. This is on a 300 milliamp 2F. As you can see, it's just super smooth with the jumper. You'll notice that how when I let off, it jumps down. Mm -hmm. That's because the elevator has that stupid mix in it. Okay, I'm gonna go out of that setting. Whoops, I hit the wrong switch, sorry guys. Okay, now I'm in the expert mode where I let off the throttle and it doesn't do that. It's just flying really solid. Okay, 300 milliamp 2S pack, plenty of power. This is the battery that came with this plane. As you can see, it's not like an amazing, incredible change from earlier, but it just feels so much more under control. I mean, and I mean a big difference. The confidence in flying this one right now compared to earlier today is just about, I don't want to say night and day, but it's pretty good. You can see it's got some good power for a little brushed motor. And it's a direct drive brushed motor. It's not like you've got a gearbox like some of the Esheen planes that have been coming out lately. Okay. Trying to get that. See, it finally, it finally lets go. The prop does. But usually well after you need it to. To have the best maximum impact. the cat mm -hmm. now it has died down a little bit the wind has today sorry to cut and play again there's a little bit of wind that creeps up around the edge of the house there Whoa. One thing about this plane I can tell you is you don't want to be inverted with it because it gets very hard to control. And that would be true of any three-channel plane, generally speaking. Most three-channel planes are going to have a certain amount of dihedral. In this case, the plane doesn't have so much dihedral, it's just it has a weak wing. So it goes into a dihedral mode. And with those, um, with those wing tips pointed up like that, it almost acts as a dihedral in and of itself. Those flared wing tips, sharklets or winglets, whichever way you want to describe them is fine by me. But just a real joy to fly this plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it around those trees there. I'm going to try to catch you here. Just kind of chop the throttle, bring it in real weak, and then I'm gonna stall it into catchable area like that. Okay, so 
Final thoughts. Those wings really work nicely to protect itself. Um, I was really disappointed I couldn't get the jumper to behave where I could have both this stick and this stick control the rudder. I'm not sure why. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I fought it forever for you guys, and I just couldn't get it to work, so I finally abandoned my efforts. So we're going to jump over to the other one. Now, this one would probably fly for a few more minutes. I'm thinking about six, seven minutes on a full charge is what you're going to expect if you fly it the way I do, which is under some throttle. I usually don't fly sailplanes or gliders that way, um, but just so you can see kind of where that battery is. I do not have the voltage alarm in here, so we're not going to know exactly when we run out of juice. And then just so you can see, that's the one that came with the Sky King. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch my model real quick before I jump into the other one. So go to model menu, model select. Whoops, sorry. So I'm going to load the XKA800. There's some stupid value on there, so I always just pass it. Pass it up. Okay, so that's ready to go. We'll go ahead and just switch that out. <clears throat> We've got another 2S 300 milliamp pack. This is the one that came with this battery. So it's at a slight disadvantage in that it's a little bit older pack. The other thing is, just so you guys know, that 500 milliamp pack that I was talking about flying with, this Volantex 2 cell 500 milliamp pack, that thing fits in here. And you got to kind of tuck all the wires up in the front, but it, it works just fine for CG. In fact, it's probably a little bit more nose heavy. Just so you can kind of see, that would also fit equally well in here. And of course, you're going to get your CG just fine because it's heavier. It doesn't need to be as far forward. So, but without further ado, we're going to test it with a stock pack. Holding the plane level. Go ahead and plug this in. Make sure things initiate. Okay, so we've initiated. You can see the controls are working. Everything but throttle's been tested because the my hand is in a dangerous spot to test the throttle yet. This canopy is a little bit easier to work with. Then you'll notice I have to kind of tuck the wires in a funny way. The other thing is this particular canopy will sometimes, if I remember right, it would catch mm -hmm. the prop. I remember that. I haven't had that happen for a while. Okay, so everything is ready to test. You'll notice that the wings have a little bit of a turn on them. That's because I've been storing this upside down for a few months. Okay, throttle's feeling not great, but at least it'll stop this thing from tractoring. That's full throttle on this unit. Kind of weaker than what it would be maybe if it was brand new. I'm gonna get some altitude and then I'll show you. Same mode of action here. We've got unlimited flight controls. I'm gonna show you with the uh, auto leveling. There's your auto leveling. Easy to fly, a little bit better control authority because of the roll axis controls and the yaw axis controls with the rudder. Obviously you can really just fine tune this thing out of the throttle, watch it stop. Isn't that cool guys? Of course, you don't have quite as fast the turns. I'm going to go into the advanced mode, being that I have a better expo and control authority in general with the jumper. Ooh, that was a tip stall there. I can do things that I would normally do with airplanes that I don't necessarily want to do with a three channel. The biggest thing is you got to keep speed. Just the cat. Yeah, tripped over the cat. But as you can see, with the diminished performance from the motor, definitely shows up a little bit in its top speed. But this plane has never been fast. It's definitely not as exciting to watch. Really? Which is funny because I typically like this style of glider more than see that's the other at the one. Top? Sorry. Yeah. But you see how the prop stopped. Yep. Which means you're actually gliding. Right. I'm sorry, but you like this one better. Camera no, I like the other one. I like usually this style of glider better, but the other one is definitely more fun to watch. 
See, and the problem is like there, I was trying to tip it upside down just so I could show you what it looks like. And I just didn't have enough in it mm -hmm. to do that, to perform that function. Now, here's the thing. I think this plane with the bigger pack would make a big difference. So I think we're going to try this, this plane with the 500 milliamp pack. So I'm going to fly it in and try to catch it. Kind of the same, same circumstances. Okay, just going to let it glide. Give it a little throttle to get it here. I <laughs> should try not to land it quite like that. As you can see, it's maybe a little bit, a little bit lackluster. Yeah. Let's go ahead and throw in a bigger pack. We'll see if we can get it to fit. Now, one thing I noticed and I, I'd forgotten about is this thing has all this foam up here on the lid. That might prevent us from fitting the battery in there. I'm not sure though. So this is where this little adapter comes in super handy. That's a GST to a low C. Okay, so this will for sure work in terms of electronically, but I just don't know if it's going to physically fit. Right. So we're going to try stuffing that in there. It does seem a little bit taller. See that camera crew? Mm -hmm. Makes me a little bit nervous. It's probably nothing I can't just ram in there. But you'll notice that, look, look what's happening. Yeah. It's wanting to... You know what, though? Take you a look. Go. I can probably stuff this in sideways, maybe. I wonder. Of course, your CG is going to be impacted to a certain degree. We'll see if we can get that now. Uh, it might go. I can probably squish it down. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so it has not started, but ironically <laughs> enough, it started right when I needed to. Okay, now with that bigger... With that bigger battery, we're gonna have a little bit more reserve. Ooh, look at the canopy. It popped already. It either popped up or I never got it snapped. That's one thing that's a little annoying about these pressure fit canopies. You see that? It's wanting to pop up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna get aggressive by moving around the plugs. And that will buy me a you know the eighth of an inch or whatever it is that I need to keep that purchase on the on the lid. This bigger battery is gonna serve two functions. One, it's gonna give us more flight time, but two, it's basically gonna give us more weight because this plane could use the weight on the nose. Um, just from the standpoint that it's supposed to be a sailplane or a glider, I don't know if it's gonna wanna stay on its own. It's totally in there fine, but I just don't know if it's gonna let me snap it to stay. That sounded better maybe. That sounded a lot better. Okay, we're fine. Here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get up a little bit so I can carry a little bit more velocity. A little bit of trimming needed. Okay, so I'm in my full control mode, expert mode, out of the throttle. A little bit more confidence a little bit more confidence in my close quarters flying given that I have the four channel control which is really nice to have but I can tell you right now okay so now I'm in the full auto leveling ooh it's fighting me now well, that's kind of annoying. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I was having to give it full yaw input and roll input to keep it going straight. So no damage. I just have to go down there and get it. I'll be right back. So when I landed, um, this motor is feeling pretty bound up. So I'm not sure if there's something that shifted. You can kind of see that, how it's pulling in and out. I just want you guys to be aware of that. I don't know if you could see that, but it's basically gets stuck at the back of the motor mount. I've had that happen before. So we're gonna try to do just a little bit more flying with this before we go ahead and abandon it and go back over to the other one. Make sure the throttle's working after landing like that. 
Okay, going back to full expert mode because I'm not messing with that again. But I can tell you, having the combination of rudder and ailerons for a experienced pilot or unexperienced, inexperienced pilot, I would argue that it, it generally helps make it easier to fly because you can make fine-tuned adjustments with the rudder that will also impact your yaw, or excuse me, your, uh, your roll. And you can, of course, make your course adjustments with your ailerons. Now, if this were a full-scale plane, you would make your adjustments with the aileron, and then you would use your elevator to pull in the amount of turn you want to make. Of course, you use, uh, I use the elevator to turn a little bit, but just not much on these rail-controlled airplanes. So as you can see, I'm at 100% throttle, guys. It's not like I'm messing around here. That's as much as I got. I'm going to see if I can catch it again. Did that go down? Yes. Dang it. <laughs> So we are gonna take throttle cuts on, tested, and the motor did get stuck back again that time, mostly because it hit my hand. Uh, we're gonna try what's left of this pack in the other plane just to show you how much better it is. Now, everybody keep in mind, I know that these planes are not equivalent because this is new and this one's not new, but they're really not that different because they've both been flown about five or six times each. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to call it the symptoms of life for five or six flights, I would say that this one's probably going to still do a lot better. And you can see this one fits in there nicely, that battery. This is just the 500 milliamp pack that I had lying around. Um, nothing magical about that. I don't know, maybe we can link to that or something. Oh, now I am going to switch. Even though this would probably work, I'm just going to go into model menu. I'm going to load the Sky King. Okay, I don't even know what that stupid warning is. I'm gonna walk out of it. Plug this in. You usually plug it in and you can see a little flashing light there. Of course, now it's solid by the time the camera crew gets on it. Um, we'll just show you how much better this performs with the bigger pack. The bigger pack provides a little bit more substance as you're drawing load from that battery. Now it doesn't produce uh, any higher C rating and it's certainly not like a 3S versus a 2S. The difference is it's just got more capacity so there's less sag when you give it full throttle. Um, these DC motors or these brushed motors are just not hyper efficient, I can say that for sure. Okay, now I found out earlier, you have to really push down to get that thing to click. Okay. Elevator, okay. All right, throttle cuts off. And that's half throttle, and it's going twice as fast. Well, a third faster. Okay, so now I'm gonna come out of the stupid safe mode and back into my advanced mode here. Oh. Evidently, it's being goofy because I had started the plane in the other mode. Now that's going to give me full pitch control. Let's try again. Yep. Just way more exciting experience. Obviously, the bigger pack bends those wings a little bit more because it's heavier. Coming right between us here. Just to show you the control authority, still pretty good. Not quite as good as having four channels. Especially not if you're wanting to fly upside down. Yes, you can technically fly upside down with the three channel, but you more or less give up any control of the plane. I'll show you. Okay, full up elevator. There's just not enough on this plane. Especially not with it nose heavy the way it is. Maybe if it was perfectly balanced. Coming around. Right in front. It looks better, it flies better, it performs better. I think they have the same motor. Of course, this one's not been crashed. Oh, well, it's a motorcycle. I was thinking it might be an airplane. Got all excited.
kind of drawn into yourself. <laughs> so guys, in closing, <clears throat> both of these planes are fun. I think it's pretty obvious which one I like better. It's not just because I got this one a few days ago. It's actually because this one is just a better flying plane. Um, and I am kind of a snob about those things. You know, like I want the flight control. And I just cannot believe I'm picking a three channel over a four. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate the A800. It's a cool plane. It's neat. It's very inexpensive. It definitely does its job. Okay? But it's definitely not as capable as this aircraft. This aircraft has better flight performance in general. Now put it up against a brand new A800 and I still feel like you're going to have the same, you're going to have the same outcome. Now, would you take the A800 guts out and turn that plane in or turn this plane into a four channel? I mean, you could, but I'm not going to waste my time on it because I've got better planes to spend on spend that kind of time on but if a guy had crashed an a800 destroyed the frame and wanted to replace the frame you could get this you could get this plane and enjoy it for a while and then go ahead and transfer over the ailerons and the main board the multi-purpose board the receiver board if you will or if you were wanting to learn like how to fix them and stuff you could, would that be better to do it on a cheaper plane like this? That's not as, wouldn't feel bad if it didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. My experience has always been fixing things on cheaper things is always better because you're going to have less consequence if you make a mistake. Because you're not talking about a lot of money with either of these planes when it gets into the radio controlled realm. Now, if you're using a jumper, well, then you got another hundred bucks or so tied up in that, plus whatever batteries you got in. And I have a little. 1000 million 2s lipo that's being in you know that's running my jumper so i mean that's another 10 bucks or 15 bucks but you wouldn't have to use that you could use double a's just like i do in the disposable comes with it transmitters but you know if this was if this was a umx uh timber from horizon let's say i mean i could i could fly that thing what anywhere I want with full control authority, but it's also going to set you back. You know, by the time you're in it, the minimum transmitter you need to run it, the battery, the chargers, you're really, you know, four or 500 bucks into it. Right. But if you've got all that stuff, then you're only talking about 130, 150 bucks, depending on when you buy it, if it's on sale, that sort of stuff, you know, so this plane is still half that cost. And it takes less technology to keep it level and all that. I mean, this is newer technology because they've upgraded it. Back in the day, they had this without a stabilizer, I believe. And they have recently upgraded it. And I can tell you, it flies pretty stinking good. I like flying it. It's fun. I'm really tempted to go between those trees, but I just don't want to get an elevator. I, I don't want to get... I don't want to get the uh, ladder or the stick of shame out. Yeah. And you can see I've been flying forever. And don't forget, I use the same pack to fly mm -hmm. the uh, failed attempt on the A800 as well. almost felt like there was a weakness there. Like a losing power weakness? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to land it here if I can catch it. I managed to knock both canopies off and drop them both to the ground. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so the throttle cut's on. You'll notice the wing popped off. It's annoying when it happens, but then you're like, hey, that's kind of nice because I didn't break anything. Yeah. Um, this little 500 milliamp pack made a big improvement on the flight characteristics, if you ask me. And these little adapters, this little LOSI to JST adapter, that was what made it all happen for me. 
And this Volantix pack, what did that come with? I don't know. We'd have to go back and look. Oh, it's probably written on there. Hmm. Nope, I didn't write it on there. Of course. Well, either way, guys, we're going to pause and get the canopies on and give you an in-closing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look in there, guys. That right there is the port I was using to try to plug in the ailerons or that auxiliary channel on the Sky King. So I wanted to show you that before I close these up. So I was trying the same thing. Guys, both of these planes are pretty cool. For the price point, I don't want to say you can't beat them, but they're both pretty good. This one's better. It's cheaper. Go for this one. Especially if you're a beginner, just learning to fly. Um, if you insist on having four channel, then get this one. You'll be fine. Remember, I beat mine up a little bit, had a couple of nose-in crashes, but keep in mind, you're going to do the same thing. Um, some of these things that happen don't happen because I'm a bad pilot. It happens because there's some sort of a technical glitch. Happens a lot on these cheapo planes. Just like what happened to me today where I lost the control of this one and crashed into the tree. So see where that prop is? It's protected. That's why I keep pointing you back at this one. It's a good plane. They're both good. I just think you're going to like you're going to like the wheelie mode better. Um, all right, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. This one is a long one. But for those of you that are really seriously thinking this hard about this, then uh, I, you definitely need to make a decision for this. Because if you watch this entire video, this, this is the one for you. Come back for more, guys.